Hello, everybody. Be welcome. I'm Vitor Pordeus. I'm a physician, community uh, physician, uh, immunologist, and transcultural psychiatrist working in Rio de Janeiro in a project that we named it uh, the Dionysus Theatre Clinic. And I'll be able to present some of the reflections of our work uh, in the last five years of community engagement and permanent uh, physician work here, seeing patients and families and seeing some emergencies and seeing some hard cases that we have been accumulating here in those list, uh, five years, from the period of August 2018 to August 2023, which will be in two months, uh, our work will fulfill uh, exact five years. This is the Art and Healing course, uh, coordinated by Dr. Jasmine Gusner from the Division of Social and Transcultural Psychiatry at McGill University, that I thank very much for inviting me to be here in this division where I had the opportunity to study and to work from 2015 to 2018 with this incredible environment that uh, the city of Montreal offered us with uh, such transcultural environment and transcultural experiences that have helped us very much to work here back in Brazil. So we are the Dionysia Theater, which is a homage, a reference to Dionysius himself, the god of madness and the god of uh, theater, and also Dr. Nisa da Silveira, who is a psychiatrist, a Brazilian psychiatrist, that is a founder of Brazilian transcultural psychiatry through the arts. And we have been following her work. She died in 1999, uh, I was in the first year of medical school, and I, I came to work in her hospital, where the, in the hospital where she worked, in the public asylum, the first public asylum of Brazil in 2009, 10 years after her death. But we managed to understand her medical and her scientific work, and we have been uh, developing this experience that we believe is a demonstration and a reproduction of the psychotherapy work of Dr. Nisa da Silveira, who worked personally with Carl Jung, who worked personally with Sigmund Freud himself. So we understand we are operating in this scientific basis of Freudian, Jungian, Enesian uh, psychotherapy, uh, uh, the phenomenological psychopathology of Carl Jaspers, the work of Fred Hickling, all that is informing our practice and I hope to demonstrate that in this reflection about theater and ritual and its importance to community mental health accordingly to our experience. In those last five years we have been uh, painting this picture of joining medical consultation and psychological consultation with uh, public rituals and theater workshop and we also started doing, uh, in the first year, uh, seeing people in their residences, uh, uh, residence visits and, and, and consultations in the house of the family, in the homes of the family, where you have a much more privileged site to witness the psychic phenomena and the psychopathological phenomena of the family. And we also developed a line of uh, a cannabis oil treatments for a large number of patients who are in now more than 120 using uh, cannabis oil here in our clinic. It's very useful uh, for different scenarios. And we also have been seeing a series of cases involving the psychiatry of the sports, involving sports neurosis, and we, this has also started the line for us. We developed uh, a forum for psychopathology, for reflecting on collective psychopathology every Wednesday uh, night, and also a immunology uh, course that was developed by one of our leading immunologists in Brazil, uh, Professor Nelson Monteiro Vaz, who has been my mentor for uh, 20 years. And also a clinical meeting, uh, uh, for clinical supervision and reviewing of the anamnesis and the reviewing of the diagnosis of the patients. We estimated uh, now 5,000 consultations and a large number of patients and a very uh, uh, 
careful execution of an amnesis, the joining of the memories, the joining of the clinical history. Also very importantly and very key for the psychotherapy work is the follow-up, the clinical follow-up and the follow-up of the family. Not only individual, but also collective, familial and transgenerational. We have had a surprising uh, demand and surprising positive clinical results in the setting of family therapy, working with co-therapists. I work with two co-therapists at the same time, usually when seeing a family, when working in a group. Uh, online consultation and follow-up, presential consultations. Uh, we also have the weekly rehearsals for the Dionysia Theater throughout those five years. So we have always had an open workshop for theater and playing and receiving new actors and seeing new people, training new people. This is a very important for the psychiatry work to succeed, that to have a transitional space, an art space, an atelier, a workshop, a theatrical uh, production, so people can get engaged and, and create and co-create. Also, the, clean, the weekly clinical supervision and the weekly cultural psychopathology forum that we are doing it for uh, three years uh, with people from all over Brazil, young psychiatrists and young psychologists we are uh, working. And since 2020, since the beginning of the pandemics, we are working with full clinical capacity, me and my assistants and a waiting list. And we are 100% privately funded by the community. So we are working with the community, for the community, involving the community and being paid by the community themselves. So we are, I am the community. I was grown up and, he, and I know this place. Uh, ten theater plays we have done in the last five years. We see more than 30 different communities. We, we are seeing a collective unconscious. We are seeing a meta community. And we managed to do theater and work with the clients and the actors and the uh, psychologists and physicians. And we could live together in the theater and we could work for uh, long periods, several weeks or years, with the person being uh, present if she, she was engaged and she was able to sing, dance, develop gestures and... Uh, contribution and collective activities, play and character interpretation, poetry declamation, general, uh, general, the general state of the patient now has always been evaluated as you uh, are rehearsing together, as you are working together, and documented reports and statements, and this we generated score to 1 to 20. We have generated different scales, like the villain interpretation scale, but this is to generate a grade, uh, a, a degree for each, case in a certain period of time or for in four weeks we are able to ev evaluate uh, like groups of families that engage together that uh, play together that participate together in the events in the workshop and also very uh, group uh, very poor performance uh, theatrical performance from very severe cases from groups of other families that uh, were in a very critical situation and could not even think about uh, doing a workshop or doing a different course, different from the tragedy of the family. So this is a very interesting idea to follow up and, and how can we explicit the clinical work and how can we explicit the psychiatric, the psychoanalytical, the, the, the psychological work that is so hard to do and so uh, sometimes to do it in a consultation room with a one-to-one -one relationship this is, makes very complicated and to achieve good results in psychiatry sometimes depends on the medium and the medium is the message as uh, Mark Lohan said and as Dr. Nisa da Silveira demonstrated with her work she, gener she generated a museum of 400,000 artworks now with more than 70 years of continuous work we are generating patterns of performances that can be quantified and qualified in different manners. And we achieve the response of 20% that we consider to be a high response in the scenario of mental health crisis that we are having, which is one out of five patients seen have a positive, a significantly positive engagement in our theatrical activities. 
And this for us is a remarkable and we are commemorating and celebrating this work because with this 20 percent you can do a lot of progresses and work with very positive uh, clinical and cultural work. Also very challenging were, were the amount of uh, uh, clinical war, uh, entities and diseases that we had to face and had to diagnose and treat in the scenario from appendicitis, one feminicide and the family, uh, uh, an avalanche of severe neurosis, schizophrenia, homelessness, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which is a, ge a, a degener degenerative disease from the nerve nervous system that died by COVID and a first episode psychosis, child abuse, organized crime, severe autism. I have one case of a rare disease called tuberous uh, sclerosis, which is a genetic disease, and, and also sexually transmitted disease and early sexual trauma, an avalanche of COVID uh, flu and, 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 and uh, cold uh, syndromes that we had been uh, treating and diagnosing. And also the sports neuroses and family syndromes involving sport neuroses that are uh, very, are calling our attention in our, in our uh, society. And uh, from a Jungian point of view, and from a psychoanalytical point of view, when we start uh, identifying images in the performance of the patients, in the clinical theatrical performance, in the discourse, in the dialoguing, in the way he behaves, in the way the family behaves. One key theme is the sex wars, which is the war between the masculine and the feminine. And this has been widely described by many, many authors, from Freud to the feminist uh, psychiatry uh, movement. And every, everybody can feel we have a broken sexuality and a broken uh, uh, emotion as a relationship. And this, I, we are remembering the Marduk and Tiamat gods, god and goddess from Babylon, from Iraq nowadays, uh, where the monotheism and the writing by the alphabet started and how this god Marduk has become the first uh, feminicide and, and mythology and he killed the the, the goddess Tiamat. Several authors have been discussing Tiamat as the defeated goddess. This happened 4,000 years ago. And also the fetish for money, which is a very common uh, neurotic trace and very prevalent in our community, which is Mammon, the devil of the Old Testament and, and, and the Faust by Goethe. Uh, where you have the invention of the money scene in the act two, in part two, scene one. Also, uh, ritualized child abuse in sustained manner. We are attacking children in a very psychological and sexual way. Uh, uh, children and adolescents have no opportunity of a healthy sexual environment and a, a healthy sexual development. We, we all grow up repressed and afraid and embarrassed and uh, with shame of our sexuality and that's we have to discuss this in a wide wide debate involving the whole society and how people think about it and this is, has been proposed since Freud isn't it the, 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 the taboo the Tottenham taboo the first chapter of Tottenham taboo which is the horror of the incest which is the consequence of not having a sexual environment that favor the development of people. So people start raping each other. Uh, organized crime and a, a cast of villains, uh, Macbeth, Richard III, the King Claudius of Denmark by Shakespeare. How, that's how we, we can interpret and attack and diagnose and treat those uh, such complex traumatic disorders that appear in violence, in crime, in Brazil, and also the issue of egocentrism, vampirism, hyster hysteria, and the issue of the ego formation, which is the development of the, the solar god, uh, as it started in our civilizations, as John Wyatt Perry talks about it, and how Freud talks about it in Moses and the monotheism. 
and also Jung talks about in the, in the development of the ego. And also, as a general theme, the pedagogy for freedom and the pedagogy for slavery. Or as, or, as stated by Paulo Freire, the Brazilian pedagogist, the pedagogy for autonomy and the pedagogy for dependency. These are general psychological themes in our communities. Uh, the plays from 2018 to 2023 were Lila by Goethe, which where a baroness is healed by a, a theater uh, physician, Dr. Verazio. He plays theater to heal madness. Hamlet, that uh, says that the play is the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. And we feel if we are in a Jungian reading, we can think that the, the king is the symbol for collective community, for collective consciousness, for community consciousness, for the community mind. So to catch the community mind, you need a play. Macbeth also is a very therapeutic and psychiatric play by uh, William Shakespeare. And, and also we have been playing it in the public library in the downtown of Rio. The Bacchae by Euripides, which is the play about Dionysus, the god of theater and the god of madness, written in four, 405 before Christ. In, in Greece, by Euripides, the, the, the great uh, playwright. Uh, the Imaginary Invalid, which is a play about hypochondria. We are facing a pandemic of neurotic hypochondria. And, and many families are uh, uh, fallen into neurotic hypochondria, in the darkest mania for disease and promoting disease and thinking about disease all the time. I see this very frequently in our general and uh, patient's discourse. Uh, also, we played the Hamlet in a glorious uh, season that was a great success. In the, in the public square, in the Arpoador beach. We also played Life of Galileo, which is a great play to talk about col colonialism, uh, intellectual colonialism, holy inquisition, the origins of science, the betrayal of science. Also Block Backus, which is our greatest success, I'll show some videos, and also The Beggar's Opera, which were our last play that we had the opportunity to play with the street population, the people living in the street in the downtown of Rio, with the, which is a very prevalent. And we had a very, very illuminating experience with this uh, Beggar's Opera that was a play uh, uh, written and played in, eight, in the 18th century in London by this group uh, that John Gay uh, wrote. And they played with the uh, beggars as actors. So nothing new under the sun. And, and this is a map of the villain. So we have the whole set of villains. So this work with theater and ritual allows you to penetrate in the unconscious of the community. And according to the performance and according to the theatrical display that we get, we can even map those villains uh, like uh, killer kings and crazy devouring mothers, Dr. Faust's drugging and, and using drugs, uh, uh, the witches, the, 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 the crazy witches, the, dark, the shadowy witches that kill the family, that kill the, 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 the community, uh, the, the, the issue of slavery as a major image in Brazil, the Babylonian gods, uh, the, the, the sexual fracture gods, Marduk and Tiamat. And this is very profitable, and in, in, in this is a line of research that we are currently developing uh, with Tiago Beck, my assistant, and Nando Rodriguez, who is also working very in, uh, frontally in this uh, area, which is the therapeutics of the villain. How villains can be very therapeutic in the, in the scenario of... of and we have accumulated promising results in the last five years as uh, evidenced and documented by those pictures and that map. In the last, uh, in the last uh, month, we have realized a seminar in the Northeast, in Fortaleza, and other small cities in Mossoró and also in Icapuí, in the community that we have been working uh, about our own community and our own work, such as the work of Professor Nelson Montero Vaz, 
who have been my mentor in immunology for the last 20 years. I'm also an immunologist and I have been producing in this area. Uh, and he is a pioneer in the idea of a physiological immunology and how the immune system operates in physiological systems, in healthy systems. And this is heavily based in the work of Professor Umberto Maturana, that is known as the biology of cognition and biology of, of, biology of language, where Maturana inau inaugurates a new paradigm in biology that have been debated in every field of science, and I just published a paper about this, I'll show this. Uh, so we have been engaging with this community of eco space in the Fortaleza city uh, for more than 10 years now and working together, and they were in the, in the Madness Hotel. Dr. Vera Dantas is the founder of this space. You have the actress Berenice Xavier, you have the poet uh, uh, Reginaldo uh, Figueiredo, you have the movie maker Luis Santos, Professor Nelson Vaz, Professor Rocinade Ferreira, and many people that are involved in this idea of mental health promotion, of community medicine, of transcultural psychiatry, of theater, of seno poetry. Seno poetry, this community has been founded but also by Ray Lima, who is a poet, a writer, a, 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 an actor, an amazing actor, and a seno poetry who developed a language for dialoguing and a cultural action for freedom based in the work of Paulo Freire, in the work of uh, Fernando Pessoa, in the work of, of his own work. And, and this uh, happens in Mossoró, in the northeast of Brazil, and we have been affirming and uh, affirming our living curriculum, which is our living community. And, and, and if we have books uh, that we have to praise and read, we need to praise and read the people, because people are also knowledge. And we have been doing this, such a pro Master Gilberto Calungueiro, Master Júnior Santos, Master Ray Lima, and the whole community, Master Josi Dantas, and the whole community of people that have been engaged in uh, uh, mental health promotion and cultural action. This is our uh, experience in the last 14 years, actually. We have been working together. And, and, and this is uh, our greatest hope, that science may be understood as a community activity. Community is the final destination of science. If science is not reaching the community, it's because it's being lost someone else, somewhere else. So every science, to, why that? Because science is to explain through practice. Science is to explain through demonstration, through practical demonstration, such as Galileo with the telescopes. So if you can't demonstrate it in the community, where are you going to demonstrate it? In the big pharma, in the big industry. So this is the issue of medicine now. We are not being able to reach the community properly. We are not being able to reach the community in a humanized way. We are not being able to reach the community in a way to value their own competencies. And this will demand very sensitive work, a lot of listening, a lot of observations, a lot of working together, a lot of, of, of mobilizing people. And I am learning from these people. I have been doing this as they are doing and they were doing before I started doing this because this Junior Santos and Ray Lima, for instance, and Vera Dantas, they, uh, uh, they, they started the Madness Hotel in 2012 when we were working together, more than 10 years ago. And, and, and our partnership it has only been strengthened and confirmed all those years and that's community work. And that's why community work is so fertile. And that's why the community economies will be able to save our psychic health and our uh, cultural health and our economic health itself. You see Brazil. Brazil is a place where we export raw materials for 500 years and we pay very expensively for high technology that is being imported. And this is psychopathological. I can only believe this is part of the psychopathology of colonization. That one month before, in March 2023, we did also this remarkable historical meeting, seminar, event in Sao Paulo with Dr. Jesuit Gusder, who is a living 
a key reference for mental health promotion and the arts today in the world, and Dr. Debbie Ann Chambers, who is a continuator of the work and a, a former student and a former collaborator of the work of Professor Fred Hicklin from Jamaica. And this is in the Paulista Avenue, so that's when they arrived. And this is a very sensitive and a very important issue now in Brazil, which is the decolonization of psychiatry, the decolonization of medicine. No, how are we going to work when our medicine is fully imported and doesn't understand the language of the people, the language of the community, the language of culture? Fortunately, we have Fred Hicklin. Fortunately, we have Nisa da Silveira. Fortunately, we have Jasmine Gaza. We have Debbie Ann Chambers. And we were able to gather such an important and special group uh, with my former student and my collaborator, Vitor Nina, uh, who is a, a mental health, uh, he's a, a primary care health officer now in Belém do Pará, which is the second largest city in the Amazon. Or my professor, Lula Vanderlei, who is a continuator and a former student and a former collaborator of Vinícius da Silveira herself, and also the great artist Ligia Clark, and also the great art critic Mario Pedroza. Lula developed and implemented a, a, psychosis, a psychosis clinic, cultural clinic, a, a severe mental illness a, a cultural clinic in the uh, Engenho de Dentro Asylum, where I worked, where Nisa da Silveira worked, where Juliano Moreira worked, and this place he named it The Space Open to Time. Also, we were very happy to uh, gather uh, Jason and Debbie and with uh, Dr. Vera Dantas, who is in the center of the picture, and she is uh, the most important living physician in Brazil today. She's a key reference for Paulo Freire pedagogies in health, how this can be used for health promotion. She founded the Echo Bay space that we realized the seminar uh, just, uh, just showed and she is a, a living healer and a, a, a living scientist and a living artist. So we were very happy to join Debbie Ann and Jasmine together with these people and my people and my community in Brazil last uh, March 2023. We also joined with uh, my team and my students and uh, other collaborators such as Regiane, uh, Regiane Mendes who is a, a wonderful researcher from Sao Paulo. She's an authority about the work of Osório Cesar, who is the teacher of Nise in the art and psychiatry. Uh, he, she worked with him in Sao Paulo before starting her own work in Rio. Uh, Regiane has been showing documents about it. We took Jasmine to visit the, mat, the, the Museum of the Images of the Unconscious that was founded by Dr. Nise da Silveira. She could see its impressive archive with more than 400,000 artworks that are uh, currently in display in the Museum of the Images of the Unconscious, open to public visitation in Brazil. Uh, and, and Jasmine closed her communication in Sao Paulo with this wonderful Joseph Campbell's advice, which is follow your joy. And this is a moment of fertilization, of spreading seeds, of joining young people, joining old people, and joining masters and students to transfer the knowledge. That's what we, are, we have to do. To transfer the knowledge, the ancestral knowledge from the old generations to the newer generations, otherwise we go mad. And we have been... Uh, also doing this a lot in the Witness Days Night meetings, which is the epigenetic psychopathology, which means cultural psychopathology, developmental psychopathology, historical psychopathology uh, in Witness Days, and we have been doing great progress. We did incredible work with the Block Bacchus, which was our greatest success when we were in the streets of Rio. <laughs>
So we have been uh, doing this uh, anchoring in Brazilian culture, anchoring in the community memory, anchoring using the, the songs that the, the, the community knows, using the songs that everybody sings in Rio, songs that many times are not understood. They, they sing, but they don't understand the lyric. So if you can play theater using those lyrics, explaining to the community the lyrics of their own songs, this is happening, and we have amazing, massive effects of mental health promotion, and amazing, massive effects of pedagogy for autonomy and cultural action for freedom, and that's exactly the theory of Paulo Freire. And I published an important paper just now in uh, December 2022, you can access, it's free access, from this uh, important magazine called Constructivist Foundations, where I explain this story, basically, that the, this idea that Nelson Weiss brought, which is a, it's a commentary on a paper that he wrote about the work of Maturana, but we call it the paradigm sh Paradigmatic Shift in Immunology, Implications for Medicine, Pathophysiology, and Public Health Policies. And I, I do a brief comment about the psychopathology implications of this uh, new idea of a biology of cognition. And that's how we play, and that's how we go into the street, and that's how we sing, uh, that's how we relate to people, and we do improvisative work all the time, which means dialogic work all the time. That's a basis for this work. You have to dialogue, you have to incorporate popular culture, you have to incorporate the elements of popular culture, you have to work with the pageants, with the poetry, with the singing, with the music. You have to frame the performance and the spontaneous activity of the community into characters, into plays, and we can use the universal dramaturgy from William Shakespeare to get it to Brazilian authors such as Nelson Rodriguez, such as Abdias do Nascimento, such as Pascual Carlos Magno, to play in the streets, to play with the community, with this client of mine, for instance, actor client Reginaldo Terra, who is working in the Dionysus Theater for 14 years, and Reginaldo is a survivor of the Holocaust, of the psychiatry public system in Brazil, and he had been arrested at, when he was 11 years old, abandoned by the family, and he lived 58 years in, into asylum institutions, and in the last four years he is living in a therapeutic community, which is uh, administered by the government, and most strikingly and remarkably, this considered to be a chronic psychotic and schizophrenic patient engaged into theater and play characters and participate in the plays for 14 years now. He started in 2009 and started doing play and singing and dancing and started playing Dionysus and started to play the King of Hamlet, the, 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 the ghost of King Hamlet, which is the character he's playing in this picture. And this happened in 2000, uh, one of the, our last plays of, of, of Hamlet. And this is a living proof of the archetype concept. It's a living proof, the clinical proof of the collective unconscious uh, uh, concept. That uh, It's a living proof of Carl Jung's uh, usefulness in clinical work or Dr. Nise da Silveira's work in clinical, uh, practical, community work. Uh, uh, also, the remarkable, genial performance of Raphael Mannheimer, who is uh, an actor and, and he a, a key contributor in this, those last three years uh, uh, in our work in the uh, theater clinic Dionysus, and this is the the new possibility of a of new a new generation of actors that is coming in our work, and we have had amazing participation of of, of a large number of people since health professionals to community people street population, the remarkable work of, of my colleague and, and co-therapist Nando Rodriguez with the Queen Gertrude in this picture, the remarkable work of the clinical work of Tiago Beck who is my co-therapist and uh, co-creator of this uh, theater clinic Dionysus, he's playing Horatio of Hamlet in this, in this play 
and we have been understanding that theater is a ritual, is a community ritual, it's a space of relationship, it's a transitional space, it's a space of development, of creation, of creativity, of improvisation, and that's mental health promotion, that's pedagogy for autonomy, that's dialogue, true dialoguing, when you come into the scene to dialogue and co-create together, not with a ready package. That's a big problem in mental health and public policies because everything is already too ready and they come with the red package into the community in order to dominate the community and not to develop the community. That's colonial thought. Freedom is mental health and disease is slavery. This is a remarkable scene that we have been doing in the street. You can see in the scene the ghost of King Hamlet in the, in the floor and the Queen Gertrude is uh, uh, dancing with her pageant, uh, singing the, 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 the music, uh, the, the Tigress of Caetano Valerio. So it is a remarkable, like a typo moment and healing moment of our work. Very importantly also we have been engaged, I've been uh, one of the co-curators in this exhibition about Nisa da Silveira that was, uh, has been uh, traveling in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, in Minas Gerais, in Rio, many places. In, uh, it was an incredible moment. A glorious moment for us was when Reginaldo Terra went to one of the fanciest museums of Rio, the, the Banco do Brasil Cultural Center, and he saw himself in the, in the wall and he was very happy and he told me that. He was very happy and he spoke to people and people took pictures with him. So it was a glorification, it was a confirmation of all this that we are doing. And we also have been doing a lot of uh, cabarets and participating in the, in the cultural life, in the nightlife of Rio, in our theater school, participating in events and playing with the, the people, playing with the, uh, the students and the psychologists and also in the streets, playing the shadows. And, and, and that's Hamlet, our king Hamlet, the king of art and madness. Hamlet is a key play into psychiatry and art. My city, or the beach we play. And this was another play that we did in the downtown of Rio, which was the Bacay. A very important play written. A city that doesn't dance is sick. This is the Seno poet Ray Lima in another moment in 2019 that we were together in his uh, city, his uh, homeland city, uh, and, and we were playing Seno poetry and playing rituals, rituals for the rising sun. And also Macbeth, the, the genius without discipline is a curse that we played in 2019 with a key participation of the moon of Queen Hecate. Queen Hecate is the goddess of the full moon in, in, the old, in old cultures, in the Mediterranean cultures, and she is glorified in the play of Shakespeare, and many actors don't know it. And, and, and here, with the, the, the large group we were working in 2019, the, the presence of Louise Rosenberg in this picture that came from Montreal, uh, we worked together in my period there, uh, also Reginaldo Terra and also our community, our group, people that are still working with us at this moment. This very key scene, the glorification of the feminine, the glorification of the witches, the glorification of the woman's power, that is everything we are missing in this world of excessive phallocentric masculine culture. The witches have reached the downtown Rio and they are free now mingling and dancing and healing because witches are healers, witches are physicians that were attacked and burned by Inquisition during eight centuries and nine million women were burned. And now the violent sorrow has turned it itself into a modern ecstasy. Now the la tristesse violente se transformou em ecstasia moderna. The, the, the violent sorrow 
is now an ecstasy and people have pleasure when they are in pain. People, our culture is a masochistic culture. Our culture is a sadistic culture. And this has been written by Shakespeare in the, seven, in the early 17th century. It has been written by Freud in the 120 years ago. And we are still uh, with difficulties to understand and practice this idea in a mental health promotion public policy. We also had this very key, for me, very, very important, the last time I met for Professor Hickling and, and also Jazz, when then uh, Professor Kirmaya could not uh, uh, be there because he had a, another uh, issue. And we, in February 15 to 2020, we uh, were together in Jamaica. I was there in Jamaica to talk about all this that we keep playing and we keep doing and we keep repeating and reaffirming it. And uh, now I feel I'm a 43-year-old man and now I feel I'm passing my knowledge to the younger people and I'm helping my older people to connect to my younger people. I'm in the middle, in the middle age. I also visited, I was invited to come to the Hamlet Castle in Denmark to participate in an event about health and uh, uh, culture. We played Hamlet uh, in downtown with pageants and carnival and, 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 and occupation of public spaces. The key participation of uh, Pelezinho in this period, and also Thiago Beck, who is my co-therapist and a clinical assistant in the last five years. Pelezinho is my client for 14 years and my actor for 14 years. And he was a street person. He lived in the street. He was homeless for more than 10 years. And in the last six years, he is living alone. He has a, 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 a small money from the government for like people with severe mental illness, and he rented his own small apartment, and he's working with his family right now, helping his family that always rejected him before uh, the therapy and the Dionysus theater engagement and the living of the street. And so we're playing a lot, and, and Dr. Vera Dantes has also been uh, with us, visiting our work permanently, and also being a mentor, and also being... Uh, an orientator. We played the Lila play from uh, Goethe, which was a big honor, and we have been uh, playing the best possible and doing a lot of workshops and, and, and permanent uh, workshops and work in the community, in the house of people, in the public square, in the hospitals. I had, uh, unfortunately, to hospitalize some patients, and this is part of the cultural work and the community work that we keep doing. This is Dr. Verazio, the physician that heals uh, psychosis through theater that was written by Goethe in 1818 in the play Lila. And, and, and that's what we have been doing, which is referencing key people, referencing important people such as Nisa da Silveira, Hans Prince Horn, Osório Cesar, Dr. Eric Cunningham Dax, who is a pioneer in art psychiatry in England and in Australia. Dr. John Wyatt Perry, who spoke about psychosis, a ritual drama of renewal uh, in California. Dr. Lula van der Leyen, who is my professor, still living here, working with a space open to time, working with contemporary art and psychotherapy in severe mental illness, psychotic people, schizophrenics. Dr. Jacques Arpin, who lives in uh, Geneva, is my mentor too. We have been connected since 2014. And he's a key reference for uh, performance, theater, and psychiatry. He has the wonderful series of works called The Masters of Their Conditions. And this is a, a, a paving, a fundamental work for us. And also Professor Fred Hickling, who has a striking. We, we have, have our work with pageants and poetry and popular culture and carnival has striking similarities to his own work in the Bellevue Hospital with the cultural uh, the therapy, psychohistoriography system, the Fa Paulo Freire reference. So we feel we are surrounded by the ancestors, surrounded by knowledge, surrounded by people that lived with, uh, with us, live with us, and some of them have died and some of them lived before us and they keep emanating the true knowledge of the good performance, of the good clinical work. It's a knowledge that if you, you believe in it and you 
uh, go to the patient, you will succeed because they didn't invent it. And I include here Jason Gerd, Carl Jung, Sigmund Freud himself, and all healers and all uh, 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 traditional healers of history that had always been fighting against diseases and against obscurity and against violence and against psychopathy like uh, us, like we are having to fight in our own society. When I started the, the clinic, I published this book that was written in Montreal uh, in the Division of Social Psychiatry uh, uh, in, in 2018. Yeah, I recently found out that it, it, was, it is translated into f six languages right now. And, 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 and now that's a surprise for me. And also, I have to make special thankings to my masters, my, my, my schizophrenic masters that have taught me the ways to uh, develop a therapeutic approach into severe disease, like uh, Jaci Oliveira Pelezinho, who, in, who was homeless in 2011 when he started working with us. And here in this picture you can see him giving a lecture to medical students of the first year in 2019, and this is historical. And this is in 2017 when he uh, rented his own a uh, small house in the suburb of Rio. And also here in Sao Paulo, in a Latin American festival for community theater, where you can see in the center of the picture, Reginaldo Terra into the scene where he traveled, he participated in the international. This happened in 2015, before the closure of the Madness Hotel. And here is Reginaldo also participating in a play, like you said, this is pictures in 2012, and this is a remarkable experience. Uh, uh, as, since I'm talking to a Montreal community, I want to bring in uh, Louise Rosenberg, who is a Montreal citizen, and she lives in Lachine, actually, and she worked with, with us in the, in the, in the Dionysus Theatre Montreal in 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018. And we had an incredible experience doing uh, the Baca, doing Macbeth, doing Lila, with an incredible group of people, educated people, uh, people uh, that were very gentle and very caring and very warming to my work and to my own uh, experience in Montreal. And I, I'm very grateful that we, met, we made this uh, a small community of collaborators in the Montreal, in the north of Montreal in a community organism named uh, Prise de, and here I thank uh, the, the Montreal community and, and, and my collaborators again, in the person of Louise Rosenberg, who wrote two theses, published many papers, and uh, has, up to now, I just received this communication, where is a, she's still working with theater, she's still working with the community, she's still working with people of different ages, collaborating, and this has just arrived, uh, it's going to happen now in, in June in, Mon in Lachine, which is a, a city, a neighbor city to Montreal, uh, a sat satellite city of, to Montreal. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Louise Rosenberg, for your own personal development, your contribution, your key contributions in our work, and the confirmation that our work could be performed in other cultures, in other cities, as we did it in Montreal, and that's a very uh, meaningful result for us all. And I need to thank all the players and all the patients and all the communities and all the families that trusted me, that trusted my work, and we have been doing this for 14 years now. The Dionysus Theatre was started in project, was started in 2009 in the public asylum of Rio, where Nisa da Silveira worked, and uh, we are still doing the same thing, practicing the same methods, but in the last five years, we could improve the clinical method. We could integrate it to internal medicine. We could integrate it to community medicine. We could integrate it in a clinical practice that is being uh, 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 fertile in, in, in my own community, with my own shadow. And this is very important. This is a way where Fred Hickling also showed and uh, did fundamental work for us all. And, and, and also, this is the last picture I did of Fred, one of the last pictures I did of Fred in 2020 when we met. And uh, I think, we believe, and what happened in Sao Paulo just now with Jason and Debian, for me was a confirmation 
that we need the work of Fred Hicklin in Brazil, that with more people understanding it, and a lot of researchers and collaborators are reading his book and are now citing his work more in Brazil, because we have this uh, common challenge of uh, post-colonial, post-slavery societies that need transcultural methods and transcultural psychiatry and drama and poetry and singing and drumming in order that the colonial curse may be broken and we can decolonize our bodies and decolonize our movements and be able to perform a whole new paradigm in theater and science and immunology and in medicine and this is happening, this is, has happened before and we keep playing and we keep advancing also with Lula Vanderlei here in a very young age and his partner Gina Ferreira using a relational object of Ligia Clark, my masters, I thank them. Also the José Pacheco pedagogist who is a living reference for the pedagogy of autonomy. The incredible experience I had in Mexico in 2017 before returning to Brazil, I was still living in Canada. And always Nízia da Silveira and always the example of this woman who founded the transcultural psychiatry in Brazil, did a remarkable experience, the in incredible contribution of Dr. Carl Jung with the collective mind, the collective unconscious, the collective psychopathology. How do you approach a community? How do you approach a collective? How do you analyze a collective event? These were the main uh, revolutionary contributions of Carl Jung and also, I like everybody I spoke here, clinicians, people who are working in the community with the sick, seeing patients and everybody. And we make a homage to Dr. Sigmund Freud, who was a man of an extraordinary courage and extraordinary scientific sense. And uh, he was persecuted. His books were literally burned in the street and he had to escape to London in order to save him, his mother, and his children, and his wife, and the rest of the family were killed by the... the rest of the family was killed by the, the Nazis in 1939, 1940, and he died just after it, with 83 years old. Also, another much very important reference for decolonizing Brazilian psychiatry is Dr. Juliano Moreira, the black psychiatrist, the first black psychiatrist that was born as a, in a, a family of enslaved people in 1873. And he founded Brazilian psychiatry. He was the director of the asylum where I worked, where Nisi worked, where everybody worked in the, in, the, in the psychiatric reformation. He was the first psychiatric reformator, and he was the first pioneer in the psychopathology of racism, the psychopathology of colonization, and the social determinants of health. That is a debate that up to now has not been incorporated in psychiatry and in clinical medicine and in public health policies. Amazingly, but that's true. And also his memory has been erased from Brazilian medicine because he was a black guy, and he brought this revolutionary vision about the, 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 the psychiatry and the society and the mental health and the social determinants of health. Uh, Juliano Moreira would write in the early beginning of, in the end of the 19th century, that uh, uh, mental diseases are not caused by genetic causes. They are caused by social conditions, social and educational conditions. That's what he wrote and that was a revolution in Brazil that has been erased, another one. And also very important, each time more, more important, as, as each patient I see and each family I see, and as each pr therapeutic prog progress I reach with, one, with myself and my family and my community, the work of uh, the school of Hippocrates is very important. It's a 2,500 years old scientific system of anamnesis, diagnosis, prognosis, and therapeutics. This is a system that is permeating the whole scientific medicine system. Everybody is working in this idea of collecting the story, making a diagnosis, treating accordingly. And this is 
the basis of uh, community medicine, the basis of psychotherapy, the basis of doing a prolific work with people. And many times the physicians are not doing it. They are not doing, they're not following the instructions of finding the meaning of the symbols that the patient brings to us, as Hippo Hippocrates wrote in his book. And I published the paper in 2018, but before I returned into Can from Canada, and I, uh, I, I wrote this, Hippocrates betrayed, now, and the question if Hippocrates is uh, being betrayed because we do the Hippocratic Oath, so we, we swear, all physicians in the West swear fidelity to Hippocratic school, which is the school of anamnesis, of joining memories. And this is attribute, attributing classifications, nosological classifications to patients instead of investigating their histories, anamnesis. And this is to remember about the sexual fracture of Marduk and Tiamat from Babylon since 4,000... Since 4,000 years ago, we are portraying women as dragoness, as monsters, and men as civilizatory phalluses and penises that invade the, uh, the territory and compete with everyone and dominate and civilize everyone. A key reference for us in this story is the alphabet versus the goddess, the conflict between word and image, that may be implicated in the origin of neurotic trauma, in the origin of the psychopathology of civilization, in the origin of the psychopathology of racism, in the origin of the psychopathology of sexual repression, which is this book by Leonard Schillen, a physician from California, where he tells the story of the invention of the alphabet in these Sumerian, Babylonian societies, and how this started the war of the masculine and the feminine, and, and also political and city wars, and, and city, uh, wars of one city of, of Babylon against the city of Uruk, the, the city of Uruk against the city of Ur, and one killing each other, and they are still doing it in the Middle East. They are still in war for 4,000 years, and this may be a psychopathological issue where some psychotherapy may be a difference. Uh, it may make some difference in those societies uh, like is we are doing difference in Brazilian community, in Rio de Janeiro community. We have the medicine of the Africans in our territory. We have the culture of the Africans that were kidnapped and enslaved and brought to Brazil, but miraculously they managed to restore their own rituals, to restore their own science, to restore their own philosophy, to restore their own uh, medicine. And I cannot believe in a Brazilian medicine that do not work with the Africans and do not develop the understanding about mental health and rituals and community that the, the Africans had brought to us. I had been working with the mothers of saints, with communities of uh, African uh, descent, uh, Brazilians, and in my own group, in my own uh, community, permanently, since I was young. And also, very importantly, uh, the work of the indigenous peoples in medicine, the work of indigenous people in science, the work of the work of indigenous people uh, of Brazil in, in philosophy, in the vision of the world, in sustaining sustainability, in ecology, in biology, and that's the issue. We have to reconcile the masculine and the feminine. We have to reconcile the mind and the body. We have to reconcile the modern and the ancestral. And in old medicine, we had always had this expression, which is a Latin one, but it's much older than, than, than the Latin, the Roman medicine, which is vex, vix medicatrix naturae. That means the forces of healing of nature. So we are working with the forces of healing of nature. And for, as far as we could understand, this is the worshipping of the goddess. This medicine is a, a feminine energy. Uh, healing is a feminine energy and we have been worshipping those goddesses and doing medicine for hundreds of thousands of years. So when I, I'm finishing the, this presentation I would like to remember that what we are doing is a very old, very ancestral activity of the human being which is caring, healing, doing medicine, medicating, 
taking care of people, protecting people. The animals do that. The, the primates do that. The mammals. Uh, nature itself is a healing force. And if we don't disturb it, we would be healed. Diseases are distorted mechanisms of healing. Distorted mechanisms of regeneration that had been taken off their original site. Or as Paracelsus said, the work of the physician is to help the sacred work of nature to be completed. And that's uh, a very important vision. We need biology, we need a new biology, we need a new medical school, and we need a new clinical practice. And I believe that transcultural psychiatry, the arts and psychiatry, are the nucleus and are the embryo of a new living curriculum, of a new school for medicine, community medicine, where people are valued in their culture, where people are valued in their identity. And that's what we need in a, such a colonized country like Brazil, Jamaica, in, in the, the African continent. A medicine that works from the inside out, from the memory, from the story, like all people and all the authors and all the ancestors that I have been uh, working here and showing my own results and, 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 and learning and thanking my patients and my family. And I think uh, that's the, our work and I hope our work may help to inspire and uh, uh, bring more people into the field of psychotherapy, into the field of, of theater, of, of, of community medicine, of, of medical education, of bringing a more sensitive, a more feminine, a more dialogic, a more uh, constructivist uh, vision into medical practice, into community practice. Thank you very much, and I'll be happy to answer questions. Here you have my website. Uh, where you can find all my papers published and some videos and all the other communications that we have been publishing uh, in our social networks and in our platforms in the internet and with our community here from Rio. Thank you very much.